You have heard our words, Lord, from our hearts, words put to music, written by people whose hearts were probably damaged at one time. And those words and melodies came from the damage. You have heard us praise you with words that we have used countless times. It's because we don't know what else to say and we have nothing better to say than thank you. Nothing higher to say than hallelujah. We are a people always struggling, Lord, to show you how strong we are. But we are weak. We are constantly trying to do more things so that in our minds we might deserve blessings. But Lord, your blessings do not come because people deserve them. You give them because you are a gracious and good God. I gather with these other members of your family. And although most of us don't know most of the people in here, we know the people around us in our section. We know the people that we've passed by in the aisles for years. But, Lord, really, there's nothing close-knit about this today except we are all saved by your blood, Jesus. I don't know people in that section or that one or that one. Or I don't know the people that are watching. But I know something drew us to this house today. And I know that we understand that we've been saved by the grace of God. And I do believe, Lord, that we feel this urge to do something to say thank you to you. But there's nothing we can do except trust you, praise you, love you. And so I ask this morning, not for... I'm not asking for eloquent words. Lord, these people have heard this preacher bluster for years. There's not a thing I can say to impress them. I don't even have a new vocabulary word that I could use today. I'm the same old guy that you called to preach. And Lord, you know better than anybody here that I did not win all my battles this week. I wish I could say that I was loyal, that I bridled my tongue. I would love to say that I controlled my thoughts and my eyes, but I didn't win all my battles this week. And that makes me feel a little unworthy right now, a little incapable of doing what this pulpit requires. But I've asked you for forgiveness. And I trust that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And I thank you for the promise that if we confess our sins, you are faithful. We're having to confess them because we're not faithful. But if we confess them, you are faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So now I ask, Lord, that all of us, and I think I hit a note with everybody. We didn't all win our battles this week. We said some things we shouldn't have said. We didn't do all the right things. I am so thankful for a father that knew us before he saved us, that knows us better than we know ourselves. You know the next bad thought I'm going to have. And you're already aware of the next word I shouldn't say that I will say. 
Lord, I've never come to this pulpit to pretend I was anything except a sinner saved by grace. So I ask you today, if I'm only up here five more minutes, Lord, let it be fruitful and effective for these precious people. And I ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you may have a seat if you will. Do you believe God's faithful? You do? So you believe that he's going to bring it to pass? I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, uh, there are what theologians have called in the past dark nights of the soul. Dark nights of the soul. It's when you can't see a way out. It's when you cannot hear God's voice. It seems that there is great distance between you and heaven. And that's a bad time because let me just express to you, I don't have anybody else but Jesus. I've got things to talk about but that I can't tell anybody but Jesus. He's all I got. And so if somehow the enemy succeeds in using my weakness against me to make me think that my Lord has turned a deaf ear to me, that is a frightful place. It is a lonely and dark place. And I have to remind myself that God said, he would never turn a deaf ear to the cries of his children. I don't have anybody else. The Lord is my shepherd. I don't have another shepherd. The Lord is my counselor. I don't have another counselor. I don't have any strength outside of Jesus. I don't have any hope beyond my Father. And so when the dark nights of the soul seem to get longer and longer and colder and colder, there is the human tendency to panic and think, have, have I done something that has so displeased God that he, he has looked in another direction? And I'm not talking just about me today. You know, I, I see Cornell over here whose wife has just been through a horrible surgery. Uh, we prayed for her healing. You believed it. It didn't happen the way we prayed it. That's a dark night of the soul right there when you wonder, does this even work? And I can look around the place, look, just look around. See, I'm a pastor. I'm... I'm not an entertainer. And I've had people in the past, I've had preachers tell me, you can't get up and show your emotions. You can't show your weakness to the people. You've got to be strong for them. I'm not that guy. I'm in the same battle you are. I'm not sitting up in an ivory tower somewhere looking down. I got blood splattered on me just like you do. I've, I have a broken heart just like some of you do. Sometimes I'm praying and I'm thinking about the things that, that our people are going through. We forget. You know, when your kids are gone, you forget the stress that was in the house. And there's a tendency to say, you know, you just need to get with it. You, you need to pray more and read. And there are young mothers in here that don't have the strength to get up in the morning. Just like you didn't when you had children at home, but as time passes, we forget. We don't, we don't remember how bad it was. Is it true? We don't, we've forgotten what it is to cry. You're so tired. 
And we just see these young parents and say, well, they ought to do more. And, and, and we forget. We just forget. Sometimes we're insensitive to their needs. And I look across the congregation and I see single parents and I see uh, parents who have prayed so fervently and they've found so many scriptures that apply to their situation and every time they find one, they say, yes, this is it. This is what God is giving me. And there comes that moment when it looks like there's a spiritual breakthrough, but then it gets worse. That's when it feels like the night has gotten darker and God is not listening anymore. We forget that there are people who, because of this world we're living in, are in such uh, anxious in such an anxious lifestyle, anxiety is eating people up. Anxiety. Uh, worried about what's going to happen next. Where do I go? What will I do? Fear. Just plain old pure fear. You know, I forget too. I, I forget because, you know, as time passes, bad things don't seem as bad as they were. Right? And good things don't seem as good as they were at that time. Just a few days ago, I was in a situation where I was so scared. I mean, literally scared that my tongue stuck to the roof of my mouth. And I thought I was going to lose all of my stomach contents. I was shaking. I was afraid that I was going to have a panic attack. I'd forgotten about that kind of fear. And the Lord let me be reminded that there are people who live in that every day. When a woman is afraid to go home because her husband might attack her, never knows what to expect. When a man is afraid to go home because his wife might call the police and say, he hit me, and then they come, and they don't ask me any questions. They just throw cuffs on you and take you downtown. And when you're afraid all the time, it can seem like God has turned a deaf ear. There are pastors watching me now who are so discouraged about their churches. Listen, young men. Well, you're not all young. But listen to me. Church has changed because people have changed. Something has happened in our society that has affected church. Church people aren't the way they used to be. They're not faithful the way they used to be. They're fickle. They are angry. They are tense and sensitive. So, young man, it's not you. It's the day you're living in. But God called you and put you there for this day. And I will say to you what Paul said to Timothy. Fulfill your ministry. Do the work of evangelist. Preach the gospel in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and patience. Because the time is coming when people will not endure sound doctrine. They may be sensitive about social issues now, but the day is coming when they won't want to hear you preach sound doctrine. But listen to me, young pastor, because I've been there. As a matter of fact, I'm here. Listen to me. Fulfill your ministry. Preach when nobody's listening. Preach when they criticize everything you say. Just remember that Noah preached 120 years and nobody got saved. Remember that Jeremiah preached 33 years and didn't have one single convert. The Bible didn't tell you to preach if people get saved. He just said, the Holy Ghost just said preach. Sometimes you have to preach to the four winds like Ezekiel did. Sometimes you've got to preach to a valley full of dead, dried up bones. But if you preach... 
the power of God and the life of God can come into those dead, dried, bleached up bones. You see, we preachers can't go by our feelings. We fight it all the time. We've got to get up and do what God called us to do. We don't have the same call they have. We have a unique call. We've been called out so we can tell them what thus saith the Lord. But you can't let people discourage you from your calling, Pastor. You've got to do what God called you to do. Don't be discouraged because nobody will join you in prayer meeting. Don't be discouraged because everything you want to do, the council is against it. Don't be discouraged because your biggest donors are now having questions about going to your church or because they found another church downtown or out in the, uh, in the suburbs uh, where there's lights and smoke and all kinds of fancy things going on. You preach the Word of God. You be faith faithful where you are. Do you hear what I'm telling you? It's not your Word that will raise them or encourage them. It is the Word of the Lord. And that's what I want to say to everybody here. I'm not just preachers. You've got to endure and you've got to be patient. God is calling you to trust Him. You won't see the end right now, but trust God. He has an answer on the way. It will not be the way you prayed for it to be. It will be better than you thought it could be. God will do more than you are asking Him to do and it will be more wonderful than you can imagine. But you've got to work through these dark nights of the soul. You've got to get up and bless the Lord anyway. You've got to read it when it doesn't make a bit of sense to you. You've got to trust the word that's in you and walk in the spirit that's guiding you. Can you hear me? I want to read one verse of Scripture, and then I think I'm just finished. I think I'm just finished. It's in Revelation chapter 3 to the angel of the church at Philadelphia. These things says he who is holy, who is true. He who has the key of David, who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. And boy, I could preach right there for a moment. Don't you dare think. Anybody can overpower God. Don't you even entertain the idea that if God has something for you, God's going to get it to you. If he opens a door, nobody can shut it. But, but if he shuts it, nobody can open it. That's the kind of God we are serving. He said, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, say amen. amen. You have a little strength, but you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Hallelujah. A little strength. Isn't it amazing? We don't look like a bunch of bodybuilders up in here. We have a little strength. I got a strength to get through this moment. He'll give me enough strength to get through this day. We'll get just enough strength to do what God has called us to do. He said, you have a little strength, but you've kept my word. You trusted me when it looked impossible. You walked with me when you felt like quitting, and you've not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Now listen, in this passage and in all these passages, the Holy Spirit is toggling between the church then and the church now. So this verse is for the church that was then, where people calling themselves Jews were coming in and teaching false doctrines and false practices, and they were putting down those who were preaching the truth. He said to them, I'm going to make the very people who are belittling you get down and see that I have called you, and my hand is on you. Now, he toggles back to today. 
Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Now, brothers and sisters, I know these are tough times. I know it. I know every personal, every person here is having a, a tribulation of sort. But that's not what he's talking about here. There is a tribulation coming on this world. There is something that's going to happen like nothing has ever happened in history, nor will ever happen again. Don't let anyone tell you that that's dealing with everyday troubles and tribulations. No, these tribulations we're going through are to build us up and encourage us. And tribulation produces patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope causes the love of God to be shed abroad in us. That's what our tribulations do. But the tribulation that's coming on this earth is not to perfect people. God is going to judge people for their rejection of him. But here's the beautiful promise. Because you've been faithful now, even with your little strength, even though you struggle to put one foot in front of the other, even when it was the darkest night of your soul, even when it, your whole family was against you, even when it looked like nothing was going to happen, in your little strength, you kept my word. You stood on my promises and you've not denied my name. And because of that, I will keep you from the great hour of trial that's coming on the whole earth to judge those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hallelujah. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. What you talking about, pastor? He's saying, Cornell, you got to hold on. No matter what happens, you've got to hold on. You got to hold on. Don't let anybody take your crown. You see, there's a crown waiting for you if you will just trust God through this situation. Don't let anybody take it. You mean they can steal my crown? No, it means that if you're not faithful, God might give it to somebody else. The very thing he's designed for you, if you'll be faithful, can be given to somebody else. That's why you're going to watch this preacher stand up here and preach it when I'd rather run the other way. And that's why you've got to pray without ceasing we have to keep on fighting the good fight of faith because there is a crown waiting on every one of us. And I don't want anybody else to get the crown that God has designed for me. He who overcomes, I will make him in the, a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go out no more. I will write on him, the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I want to finish right here. God has given you something this world does not have. Eyes and ears. You cannot understand spiritual things until God gives you spiritual eyes and spiritual ears. No sinner can sit down and read and understand the Bible. Only the Holy Spirit reveals truth to people. Jesus said to the disciples, your ears are blessed and your eyes are blessed because you're hearing things that the prophets long to hear. You're seeing things that they cannot see. I'm showing you mysteries, secrets that nobody else will ever be able to understand. Only the Holy Spirit can do it. Oh, my word, listen to me, church. Do you realize what a gift it is to be able to understand the cross of Jesus Christ? It's a mystery. The incarnation of Jesus Christ is a mystery. That Christ is dwelling in us. That's a mystery, the Bible says. But you get it. You go out into the world and talk about that and people just...
we'll call you crazy. Oh, thank God. Thank God. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Take care of your eyes. Make sure that your eyes stay on Jesus. Protect them with all that you have. Protect your ears. Cover them up. Don't listen to the counsel of the ungodly. Protect the gift of ears and eyes so that you can continue to hear and see until I come. Stand with me, please. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. I thank you, Lord, for your constant and abiding presence. For all of us who came in here today and just didn't have it, we recognize we have a little strength. But in your faithfulness, you helped us to keep your word. God, I, as the pastor of this church, I'm praying. I turn around and I know the struggles that many of these people have had. Still having. Turn around this way and I realize the broken hearts the disappointments, the feeling that we're making some progress only to see it shattered. Another broken heart. Remind us, O oh Lord, and I believe you have today, you are faithful. Say it, church, God is faithful. God is faithful. I told you last Sunday, I can't explain God's ways. He says, ask anything in my name and I'll do it. We ask for people to get healed. And I've buried a bunch of people in here who, who were prayed over. We pray for God to heal people. They have to go through the surgery. We pray for God to heal marriages. They end up in divorce court. I can't explain all this. But I know God's faithful. And I don't have to understand everything to believe what God said. Do you hear me, church? I believe what He said. And somehow, He can take what's wrong and make it right. What the enemy means for harm, God turns around and makes something good out of it. Can I get an amen? amen. And may I ask you, since I didn't preach very long, would you just come down here and join me around the altar? Thank you, Jesus. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided.
just play it. If we want to hum it, we'll do that. We're in the presence of the Lord. and I know a person who came into my office uh, because of great sin. He, this person got on his face and wept as hard as anybody I've ever seen wept and cried out to God for forgiveness and stayed back there with me a couple of hours and we talked about what needed to be done and thank God for saving him and I went away rejoicing and telling everybody what happened in my office. Didn't last long, did it, Larry? Went right back into an old lifestyle. Now, if you, if you put your eyes on that, it will discourage you. You get your eyes off what didn't happen and put them back on Jesus. Yeah. Because there are no answers except Jesus. And I will say it again. It is not over as long as breath is in the body and the heart is beating. So that's not the end of anything. That's a situation that happened. And the devil was jumping up and down, and I'm sure he is now. But he doesn't have the last word. He doesn't have the last word. God has the last word on every situation, even on the devil. And the devil is on his way to the lake of fire. Just remember this. God is faithful by whom you were called. And what God started, he will finish. I sense that there might be four or five of you just really overwhelmed this morning. So I'm going to ask council members to get some oil. They're going to stand right down front. The choir is going to sing quietly. And we're just going to anoint people. If you, it doesn't mean you don't have faith. It means you just want to agree with somebody. Dogs spread all the way across if you wish. It is not over. Do not listen to the devil. Do not look at the circumstances. It is not over. Everybody hear me over in the corner? He is still in charge. It is not over yet.
softly. Ray. Sing it softly till they finish. You don't mind.
can leave today with a little strength, knowing that that's all you need. Jesus will keep us. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7 for our most important service. Be blessed all day long. You can stay and sing a while if you wish.